The theater goes dark and a thousand elementary school students start whooping and hollering and hitting each other just like elementary school students do when the lights go out. But then one light comes on. It's a spotlight that shines on a section of the stage off to the left. And in it you can see the silhouette of a security guard going around making his rounds and closing down a museum for the night. Then that light goes out and the lights on the stage come up. And on the stage, it's very spare. There's not much going on. But each of these characters is dressed in period garb. There are outlaws, cowboys, soldiers, and they begin to describe their various adventures in life. Now, each of these represents a firearm. What is happening is we are looking into a museum. This is the museum that has the last firearms on Earth. Uh, outside of the museum, all firearms have been purged. Everything is gone. I guess everything is just wonderful and hunky-dory. It's a, a brave new world out there. But in this museum are the final relics of man's primitive past. Uh, so we have uh, Bell Star's revolver. We have, uh, you know, weapons of war. So we have... Uh, you know, like a, a soldier character dressed up, and he's supposed to represent uh, a rifle that was used in war. We have cowboys, outlaws, soldiers, folks that have used weapons in the past, and then each of these firearms that's in this display case at the museum, they all get together and they tell each other their stories. And as they tell these stories of adventure and mayhem, you know, they're all very proud of the various things that they did. And then each of them at some point in their story would have just this little hiccup, this little uh, kind of turn in their story where they look down wistfully and think, maybe that wasn't the greatest thing ever. And then they go back to changing their minds and, you know, their, all their exploits were just wonderful. And then as they are kind of bouncing things off each other and, you know, getting themselves all riled up, they realize that in one of the other cases, there is one lone round of ammunition, which just happens to fit, uh, I think it's the cowboy gun. And all the other guns are holding this gun and they're waiting for the guard to come back around so they can hold him at gunpoint, get out of their uh, little curio cases, go back out onto the streets and cause mayhem again. And and uh, as they're holding this man up, they somehow pull the trigger, kill him, and then they return to their cases remorseful. Uh, so the, the message of this whole thing is just, it's terribly obvious, even to an elementary school student like myself. This was about 30 years ago back in Hawaii. I, I talked before about some of my experiences at school in Hawaii uh, and some of the, the bizarre things that our Miss Tamashiro, one of our uh, kind of weird counselors, actually a, a commissar, uh, you know, really, the more I, I looked at it in the past, uh, the more I realized that Miss Tamashiro at Kipapa Elementary School in Hawaii was uh, you know, a socialist commissar. Her job was to be a liaison between, you know, the, the big state that was to come and the, uh, the students there. So she was training us all up to be good commies. And she especially wanted for me and some of the others that were especially gifted in certain things to, uh, to become the next commissars to preach the gospel of communism. And I'm not overreaching here. It was actually all patently obvious while I was in there. It especially became more obvious with time as I started to realize some of the things that were done in Soviet Russia and China. And uh, she was just bringing some of that from Berkeley to us. Even as an elementary school student, I realized that the play itself was in some ways pretty brilliant and in some ways pretty idiotic. Uh, first off, they managed to save themselves a gob of money by having no props, no sets. Uh, it was just, you know, a black stage back there. They didn't have to have any kind of set. They just told you that this was a museum. And of course, there are no props because the characters themselves are the props, so there you go. I ended up with a very cheap production. You just had to pay the light bill and buy some costumes. Each one of the characters was, the storytelling of it was actually kind of neat. It, you know, everyone was an unreliable narrator. It was pretty smart how they did it that way. So it leaves us in the audience to see the gaps in some of the things that they're saying. You know, they're very excited about their exploits, but of course us in the audience, you know, we're supposed to be realizing that the things that they have done are evil. And, uh, you know, so we're supposed to start to hate the characters over time. And when they are finally mothballed at the end of it all, we're supposed to feel uh, really good about that. 
The silhouette guard was a brilliant decision because they could have him tower over the other characters. He was huge on the stage, you know, kind of creating that juxtaposition of real human versus, you know, okay, these are the tiny little, you know, gun people down here. Uh, so that was kind of cool, but there was a big problem of removing the only human in the whole play. So we're left with actually a bunch of props on stage and the only person in it, as far as I remember, had no lines whatsoever. He just kind of mimed everything that he did. There wasn't a single elementary school student in the whole theater to whom the message was not obvious. People do bad things with guns. Or was that the message? No, the message was actually that the guns themselves are bad, and there is a big distinction between those two things. If you were to tell me people do bad things with guns, I would say, yeah, yeah, they're doing them right now. There's probably a good handful of people doing bad things with guns right now. And there are probably even more people doing good things with guns. They're, you know, it's hunting season right now, so there are probably a lot of people out there going to collect venison for their families. And there are probably a lot of people defending themselves right now against violent attackers with guns. But the distinction saying that guns are bad, that's very different. This is getting into some very shaky territory. Let's contrast those two messages. People do bad things with guns versus guns themselves are bad. The idea here that we get from social progressives on a whole lot of things, not just guns, is that if you take away temptation, if you take away the object itself, then you cure human nature. You have fixed humanity. And this is idiotic. This idea is based in materialism, a deterministic and fatalistic system. It's one that says that you are nothing but a collection of your genetics, uh, you, the various things that you've bumped into in your life, how you were raised as a child, uh, all of your experiences and all of your outside influences. So you are a collection of nothing but outside pressures and you're just kind of a reaction to all of that. All of your thoughts, all your desires, your appetites, your feelings, they all come from the outside and whatever genetic uh, material you might have had. It all just kind of combines to create uh, this eventual you. You don't actually really have any control over it. So if we can take away certain experiences or if we can remove temptation, then you will suddenly become a better person. Now this is partly true. There are certain things that, okay, with this rifle right back here, if I didn't have it, then there are certain things, uh, certain opportunities that are not afforded to me. So if this goes away, then I certainly can't either shoot a deer or shoot a person with it. But clinging solely to this line of thinking ignores the greater truth about humanity. Just think about it. We've had people raised in very similar circumstances that have come out completely differently. We have people that have been raised in bad environments that have come out to be good people. We have people that have been raised in great environments, ones that we think would be idyllic, and they come out of it uh, all messed up. Uh, we could have siblings that are raised in the same house under the same rules, same circumstances. They have pretty much the same experiences and they come out completely differently. Why is that? That's because, yes, we do have our nature. We have, you know, whatever is built into us. We have our genetics. We have our hormones. We have uh, whatever else is built into us, into our bodies and into our brains. But then we also have nurture, we have that second thing, and this is what progressives think you know, adds up to the totality of humanity, and they are missing the third thing, the most important thing, and that is the will. They completely deny the will itself. My ability to take a look, you know, even with all of the prejudices, all the biases, all of the, you know, the makeup that I have to take a look at a decision and to choose which one that I'm going to go down. There are plenty of reasons for me to have chosen a completely different lifestyle than I have right now. And maybe you could look at it and say, oh, you know, some little tweak right here kind of changed everything. I'll tell you exactly what that tweak was. That was me. That was the real me, the one that's looking out through these eyes. This rifle is an object. I choose whether it is a weapon of war, if it is the, the weapon of a criminal, if it's used to take game out in the field, if it's a range toy, that's all up to me. This 
was designed for certain purposes. Yes, this does launch an object very fast out the other end, and it is designed for me to use. So you could say that yes, it does have certain properties imbued into it by its designer. But in the end, how it is used is completely up to me and it's up to you. And that's the thing that the progressives want to deny. Obviously, I'm a fan of firearms. I test and review these here on the channel. So if you want to see some really fun stuff, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and especially hit that notification bell down there so you don't miss anything coming up. Uh, we have some really fun rifles and other uh, things like optics that we test around here, and we get into some really fun challenges. But I don't need this to be a good guy or a bad guy. Any power differential will do. I'm a six foot two, relatively uh, well built guy. I'm in pretty good shape. So if I wanted to, I could inflict my will on somebody else and I don't even need any kind of weapon. You know, or maybe I could find something at hand like a stone uh, per Cain and Abel. Uh, I don't really need something like this in order to be good or bad and you know that. Any power differential is going to be an opportunity for somebody to, I mean, it's like they were a bad guy or a good guy to begin with. And if there is a chance to take power in the case of a bad guy, then they're gonna use it. That's just how it goes. They're gonna find some advantage, some way to inflict their will on somebody else. And me, since I'm supposedly one of the good guys, uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna inflict my will on somebody else, even though I have enough firepower in here to probably arm my entire street. That's my critique of one dumb play, but here's the bigger question. Why were we there? How did our school feel that they had the right to take us all on a field trip to be indoctrinated at this community college? They took our whole sixth grade class there were students from all kinds of other schools in the area. Uh, we're all taken to this community college and we were you know, given this propaganda. And I think that there were uh, some of the other classes like the fifth graders and fourth graders that were sent to this as well. They didn't tell the parents beforehand what the content of this play was. It was just gonna be a play. You know, what could possibly be wrong with a, a stage play? They, but here's the deal. Much like I was talking about how if you have any power differential, you can be either good or bad. The people at our school, Miss Tamashiro leading the charge, decided to take whatever was in them and to take that power differential and to take us all out to be propagandized. And if you think that this was one isolated incident from back in the 80s, you are completely wrong. This has been ramping up more and more every day. So right now, your students are probably being taught all kinds of stuff that you have no input on, and they're not gonna tell you about it. If you're lucky, your kids might tell you about it at school. But uh, probably just like everything else, you know, you ask them how they did at school today and they'll say fine or it was no fun. They're not gonna tell you what they actually did, but right now they are probably watching videos, being taught lessons, uh, maybe some of these breakout sessions like we had with Miss Tomashiro, where they are getting messages that you do not approve of. They've gone beyond reading, writing, and arithmetic, and they're starting to throw in whatever social progressive messages that they possibly can. So uh, I need you guys to stay alert. Check on your schools, don't assume the best. Assume that your kids are being indoctrinated possibly on a day-to-day -day basis in school. There are just too many folks that have come up through the modern university system that have been taught all this stuff and they are passing it on uh, even whether they recognize it or not. It's gonna be inherent in their own biases and how they view uh, everything, even everything down to math and science. My recommendations to all of you, especially those of you with school-aged children, is first, check with them and see what they're actually learning, what sort of stuff they're actually getting up to. You may have to you know, really dig deep to figure out what things are going on in there. You might have to question them about some of the ways that things are being presented in the classroom. But uh, please do that dig if you can, and see if you can figure out what sorts of programs are being adopted at the school. A lot of this stuff is much more open than you think. Uh, they might have posters up around the school or you know certain things they talk about. Like if you go to one of the meetings, you're gonna have certain factions within there that are trying to push for this agenda, and I think you need to be ready to push back. The big thing though is just to be ready to say no. Even in schools where they have a lot of this stuff permeated through it, you can still, in a lot of cases, opt your kids out. Uh, you can tell somebody, all right, no, we don't want 
our kid in your weird sex education or you know gun education, whatever sort of extra stuff that they're throwing in there. If there's any kind of weird social topics, uh, you can tell them, no, 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 my kid's out of that. And hopefully they'll actually respect that and uh, uh, not let your kid into that sort of stuff. That, that was actually some of the things that uh, my parents had to do with me back in Hawaii. They had to tell them, okay, no, he's not in this stuff. When it comes around to here, you know, that's our topic, we'll deal with it. He does not belong in that class. Focusing on objects while denying human nature, free will, and God himself is the wrong way to go. And if that's social progress, I'm the social regressive. Thanks a lot for watching this video, you guys. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, like I said, so you can see new videos when they come out. I have some other topics like this that I'd like to talk about on a, you know, kind of a limited basis. Most of what we do is this stuff right here, and you'll probably find some really fun stuff to get into. Uh, we've been able to test some really cool gear like I was talking about, and we have more in the future. I actually have a really exciting hunt coming up here pretty soon. But thank you to everybody that makes videos like these possible, especially patrons of the destructive arts. We have folks out on Patreon that are kicking in a buck or two a month to help keep videos like these coming. And if you'd like to join their ranks, I'll put a link around here. But we also have some folks at uh, some of the, the higher levels, like we have 338 Lapua Magnum level uh, patrons of the destructive arts. Those are going to be Sportsman's Guide, Stan and Mary, and Tyler. And then at the 300 Win Mag level, we have Howard, Joseph Davis, Peter, and Mr. No Name. And if anybody else wants to jump in, like I said, I'll, I'll have a link around here. I'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.